Hi, boys and girls of room five. Um, so we are going to continue doing our Me on the Map book. Last week, we started it, and we started in our own bedrooms on our own street, and then we worked up to the city of Concord, and then we studied the great state of California, which is our state. But next in our Me on the Map book, we take it out a step further to our country. And our country is the United States of America is its full name. However, as a first grader, it can be tricky because you hear the United States of America said so many different ways. You'll hear people say the USA. You'll hear people say the US. You'll hear people say America. And all of those things mean the exact same thing. They mean the United States of America. So um, in your packet, if you have printed out your Me on the Map packet, um, the next pages, you have two pages about our country. One, um, I believe, is blank. And we're going to work on that page tomorrow when we learn a little bit more about our nation's flag. Um, and then I will show you exactly how to write this sentence and exactly how to color the flag because the flag is incredibly important to our country and we're gonna learn about um, how it came to be, why it has 50 stars, why it has 13 stripes. Um, it's not just drawn that way for fun. Those things are symbolic. That means they each mean something. So we're actually gonna start today by doing the actual map of the United States of America. But first, before we start that, um, I have a sweet story to read to you, and it's called Sweet Land of Liberty. And it kind of just gives you an overview about um, the United States of America, why we are such a special country, and some of the highlights. Over the next week, what we're really going to do is look at different symbols of America, and we're actually even going to look at some of the songs that we were singing on Flag Day Friday uh, throughout first grade and what those words mean in those songs. So um, like this, this book right here is called Sweet Land of Liberty, and that's in one of the songs we sing. So we're kind of going to look at what does liberty mean and what does freedom mean and what do some of these things that we attach to the United States of America mean. So um, get cozy real quick because I'm going to start the week reading you this story. We're going to work a little bit on this map. And then um, every day this week, we're going to learn about another symbol of America until we get to our final art project on Friday for America. Um, also this week, I know you've been working on your Me on the Map book. Um, this is usually when we pause our Me on the Map and we work on our book of American symbols as well. So I will also be using this book this week. And um, I know that some of you have already finished it or been working on it, that's fine. You can either do it again or you can just watch the videos and watch what I have to say about it, okay? So this is called Sweet Land of Liberty. Ellis the elephant was a smart little guy with a curly gray trunk and a twinkling eye. He liked asking questions. He was eager to see how America became the land of the free. Ellis went to the library, an amazing place, and looked at the books with a grin on his face. These books hold the secret, I'm sure it is true, why America is special, full of red, white, and blue. In his first book, he read how America began. Brave pilgrims came here to find a new land. With the help of God, they survived cold and beast and celebrated together with a Thanksgiving feast. As the years went on, more and more settlers came. They formed 13 colonies, none quite the same. But on one sure thing they would all agree, the king would not rule them, they would be free. But the king didn't listen and passed a tax on tea. The colonists said, we won't pay a fee. 
They jumped on the ships and caused a real commotion. Then they threw the English tea right into the ocean. This was something called the Boston Tea Party that you'll learn more about in fifth grade. Um, everything in this book, it's this obviously is a fictional book because it's an elephant who's reading the stories. Um, some of these things are very factual and other things as you get older, you'll learn a little bit more about. All men are created equal, the people did say. We have rights from God that can't be taken away. Together in Philadelphia, our founding fathers in attendance, the colonies declared, we must have independence. This is when the Declaration of Independence was signed. And um, it was written by Thomas Jefferson. And um, George Washington was in the room at the same time. So it was sort of... The Declaration of Independence almost was like the book, the rule book for America. That independence was not so easily won. It would take years of fighting and fighting's not fun. But there was a great man who helped lead the way, George Washington, the father of our country, we say. Across the Delaware, he led the troops in freezing rain and snow. Throughout the revolution, much bravery did he show. After winning the war, Washington would not become a king. He became our first president, and that's a better thing. So we were um, one of the first countries to have a president, very different from a king. Ellis found another book with more presidents reflected, all chosen by the people, every one of them elected. Abraham Lincoln was a president who did a lot of reading to be well prepared for the country he'd be leading. Ellis learned that Lincoln was called Honest Abe. He became a great hero for freeing the slaves. Throughout the Civil War, President Lincoln stood tall. His leadership was admired by one and by all. And you guys already know that. You're experts on Abraham Lincoln. Ellis read of cowboys going west across the plains as families rode together in covered wagon trains. This long journey would put their courage to the test, but the settlers didn't stop and forward on they pressed. These Americans were known as the great pioneers and they would learn to prosper on the new frontier. And this is also what it looked like for many families as they traveled to California to try and find gold. Ellis learned that in, in America, we are free to live our dreams. With much work, we do great things, as hard as they may seem. Thomas Edison made the light bulb. We know about that. Alexander Graham Bell, the phone. When the Wright brothers invented the airplane, it was the first time anyone had flown. So that first airplane was invented by two brothers named the Wright brothers, right in America. Ellis read of those coming from distant shores, arriving in a country they had never seen before. Speaking different languages, they all shared a dream, to live together in a land where freedom was supreme. There were so many people coming to this spot that America became known as the Great Melting Pot. Through Ellis Island, these new Americans came and Ellis was delighted just to read his name. So Ellis Island is on the other side of our country. It's close to New York and it's where the Statue of Liberty is. And that will be part of our art project for this assignment. Ellis read on about generations past. He learned what they did to make freedom last. Our freedom was earned by great women and men. We must never forget how brave they have been. They boldly stood up when their country did call. Without them, we might not have freedom at all. Ellis learned of the race to put a man on the moon, President Kennedy said. We must do it soon. Many watched as the rocket flew into the sky, 
Bound for the moon, the astronauts did fly. They raised a flag and began to explore. It was something that no one had done before. You know all about that, right? There's either Neil Armstrong or Buzz Aldrin, huh? One of the first men on the moon. As the afternoon passed, Ellis read of the deeds that many have done to help those in need. Whenever there's a challenge, be it far or near, Americans are more than ready to volunteer. Ellis packed up his trunk. He was done for the day. He would come back tomorrow and keep reading away. Now it was time for a celebration, a birthday party for our great nation. Ellis watched the fireworks and could clearly see that America is special, the land of the free. And he's celebrating on the 4th of July, which is America's birthday. That's why we have that big celebration on the 4th of July. And um, this there's a page in here that I find very true for us right now. And it's this one, it's the helpers. And right now, obviously our country is at home and there are so many helpers out there in our country who are helping still to keep us safe. Um, and they're all the people who are still having to go to work every day and um, doing what's best to keep all Americans safe right now and to try and keep us as healthy as possible. So what we're gonna do is, um, if you have this map, and if you don't have a map, that's totally fine. You could look one up, you could print any one out. It doesn't really make a difference. The point is to find something that has America on it. I'm gonna scoot you guys forward. And it's really hard to see because um, you're kind of far away. But what I wanted you to label on here is we're only going to label about five things. And um, the first thing is up above us, this is Canada. And we are not part of Canada. And down below us right here, this is Mexico. And we are not part of Mexico either. We just share North America with those two countries. So we always label those just so we know that they are there. Um, and a lot of times we'll travel to them in our lifetime, but they are not part of our country. Then the next thing to label is our oceans. So in a lot of songs, you'll hear from sea to shining sea. And what that means is this is an ocean over here or a sea all the way to the other shining sea, which is over here. Now, this is a pretty small map and you might have a pencil or a Sharpie or a pen or something. I'm gonna actually write how to spell these words on these lines next to it so you can see it easier. So over here, of course, you'll see good old California. And let's put a CA for California in there. And then, of course, if you have crayons or markers or something, you can color in California. I always color it in yellow because it's known as the Golden State. So there it is. Um, so over here, this is our Pacific Ocean. So if you were going to write it, you have to use an uppercase T and it's the... Pacific Ocean, okay, and the Pacific Ocean is this whole part right here. So I would write it right there if I was you, and then of course I'll put some little waves in here, and I would go through and color it blue, probably with a blue crayon. Now over here on the other side, from sea to shining sea, this ocean is called the Atlantic Ocean. So make sure that when you write those oceans on your map that you of course 
uppercase, right? And it's always important to label main countries and main oceans on a map so you get the idea. And then, um, of course, I would do this again. Okay. Now, if you have room, we always want to try and do our little compass. So that's that plus sign where we write north, south, east, and west. Okay. So that way we can see it. And so that's kind of what you want to do. And then um, if we were in class, what I would have you do is color the oceans blue and um, I would have you color the rest of America in, usually I think we use red since um, America is known as red, white, and blue. Um, these right here are the 48 states. There are two states, of course, that are not connected. One is over here and it's Alaska and one is over here and it's Hawaii. So you can see how they put those in little boxes just to show us where um, that they're still a part of the United States. And you can even see on here it said the United States. It didn't say the United States of America. So um, you have to look for that on different maps. Okay, so this is all we're doing today. And then tomorrow we will go in um, a little bit deeper and we will start learning about some different things in America. I have lots of books to share with you. Um, we have to learn about things like our flag. We have to learn about the Statue of Liberty and why that's such an amazing symbol of our country. We have to learn about the bald eagle and why the bald eagle is our national bird. So we're gonna learn um, a lot more about America this week. It's going to be great. Um, so I love you and I miss you and there's no place like home in the USA.